Hi, I'm Uncle Mark. Welcome to the channel. I'm working on a Impala with the 3400, changing the water pump on it. Uh, just a little note here, I will not be bleeding the system at the end because it looks like this has also got another issue, uh, something with a head gasket, so I couldn't get uh, build up the pressure. Anyway, show you how easy it is to change it. I did change it, and the water pump's fine. So I've got my antifreeze bucket waiting. First, you got to jack the car up. So I've got it jacked up, and I've got the engine subframe sitting on some jack stands. Safety first, of course. Although I don't think I'm going to be under there much. But actually, it turns out I can see the bucket under there. It turns out that having it a little higher for me is better for me because I'm a little tall guy. See the bucket right here sitting roughly about there just because the hose that I'm going to take off is just above it so it's got one of these clamps and these are always tough to get off or put back on or move around so special pliers for them this tool is made just for these I so highly suggest you get one from somewhere so you see how it works the flat side goes on the flat side there's one that's like a cup that goes on the uh, little finger that's sticking out. Link in the description for this tool. And as you squeeze, it snaps and locks. Although this tool of mine is getting a little old. I think the spring's a little weak. I need to work on it. But it should lock wherever you squeeze it to, and then you can just move the pliers. Let's squeeze a little more. It's that easy. And they stay on there really well. So I've decided all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this hose here that goes right into the water pump. Because basically all I really need is the water pump empty. I thought it would be a little easier than trying to go into the car and train the rad. Which looks like it's kind of hard on this car to get at the drain plug. And of course this has been on probably as long as the car is. The car is quite old. So I'm trying to not poke the hose because I don't want to make a hole in it. I'm using the pointy part. I'm kind of forcing it more towards the metal. These actually work not too bad. They're a lot better than a screwdriver. Got these a while back. One of them's got a different curve to it. I'll put a link in the description too if you're interested in one of these. Let's see if I can find where I got it from. I'm sure I got it on Amazon. They're not very expensive. Just free the hose up a little bit, and it's going to gush everywhere. So hopefully you've got something underneath to catch it all. Probably could have used a couple more pans under there. There we go. In my bloopers, I've got this in slow motion. It's kind of neat to see how it poured out of that hose. Something for later if you get bored. Try and drain the hose a little bit. I just want to get this car going. Some friends of ours own it. This would have been a really good time, I guess, to drain all the antifreeze and put new antifreeze. Looks like half of it got into the bowl or the pan and half of it got on the ground. Great. My garage is going to be slippery. Oh, well, I learned something. Would it be not as messy if a guy could have got the rad to drain in the proper spot here? And there's a bolt here. It's just holding this little cover on. It's going to make it a lot easier to get uh, the belt off. It looks like it's an 8mm. Try and put it all on with one hand. And of course, I tried and tried and tried. It's not going to work very well. Ta da! It's on there now. So, basic 
should I just grab this thing, take it off? It's not very tight. Once it's loose with an extension, I was able to just oh, it's gonna tighten it a little bit just because I want to get this wire off the top here. And hook this connector clip. Move that out of the way. Back to the bolt. Take that off and put it somewhere where I don't lose the bolt. Just a little guy. So far so good. I'm going to try and loosen these first. Just because it's going to be really hard to loosen them with the belt off. And as you can see, I don't know if it's because I've got uh, antifreeze on the belt, maybe a little bit, that it's a little wet. Here's a neighbor doing something outside there. Here's something running. Leaf blower or something. Leaf blower blowing snow. This is December. I'm going to try and get these off. They're not super tight. But it will help if I use a screwdriver and just kind of price and I hold it. I think I've got the three of them off. Get this fourth one off. Just need to loosen because the belt's still on as you can see. Once you get all these off, uh, I'm going to try and get the belt off. <clears throat> Maybe I need a smaller screwdriver. That might work. Lots of grunting, groaning. That always helps too. Lots of grunting. There you go. It was a nice big grunt. These belts come off fairly easy with your 3 8 ratchet. Just want to make it in the loosening position. Does that make sense? Because you can want to stick it in there and lift the handle up. Like so. And of course you're going to want to lift it way past as far as you can lift it. That's the kind of issue. As long as I can pop the belt off of one of these pulleys. That'll be good. I believe that's a power steering pulley on that one. And uh, good idea to mark the belt. I'll show you right here. In the top right corner, how I marked it. So I had this on and off a couple times. <coughs> This repair, I end up fixing the pump and then find out there's another leak. So, behind the scenes, I marked it. Grab these little bolts off and put them in. I've got one of those little magnetic uh, cups, or it's like a little dish. Those are nice because if the nuts are the right kind of metal, but a magnet will stick to it, most of them usually are. Pretty hard to lose them even if you kick it away. And this is just should be just sitting on there. And you can see, yeah, pump has been leaking antifreeze. And it's been dribbling down into here. Then it gets flung all over the place. So the pump itself, just 8 millimeter bolts. Again, they're not super tight. I'll put the specs, the torque specs in when we put it back together. Just little bolts. Actually, my pump came with brand new ones, these little uh, bolts, which was kind of nice. Of course, you know me, I'm going to save the old ones, because one day I might lose one. I'll put them all together, though. I won't do the thing that my you know, dad or grandpa used to do. They put it in a jar somewhere, and you'd have a million of them, and you could, you know, dump them out and find three of the five you need. Let me see. After doing these things a few times, you get a little smarter, we hope. I just need to pry this off just a little bit. And there's hopefully an ear somewhere or somewhere I can just grab, just gently. Seems to be one there. I don't want to break anything. I guess this pump is not going to be reused anyway. There was no core. There you go. I'm glad it came off that easy. There was a gasket on here. I'm speeding it up a little bit. Really should be really careful because I don't want to gouge the surface. 
I've got some of these plastic razor blades too. Played around with that a little bit. It's like, I think I'm going to go back to the real razor blades for now. They just weren't sharp enough or hard enough to get in there. There's the real razor blade again. Pretty good camera work, huh? You see part of the gasket there, part of it there too. It was kind of hard to see. At first it looked like there wasn't much on there, but there's more on here than you think. And again, I don't want to wreck the surface because then it'll leak through there. It doesn't take much to wreck these two. Now I'm using the plastic one again. That one shouldn't hurt anything. I'll try and put a link in the description to some of the plastic razor blades. They can be of help too. As you can see here, this is on here pretty good. So when this card uses this flat gasket, some of them actually, the newer vehicles, they've gotten smart. They've put like a rubber uh, O-ring kind of gasket. Much better taking out, putting in. This is really fiddly. But once I get it going, I don't know what the shop would have charged for it. You know what it's like, everything's a couple hundred dollars or more. So I'm just going to put this hose back on. May as well already before I forget. I don't want to get junk in the hose. Our little pliers there again. You see how that works. It's kind of a ratcheting thing. They weren't a whole lot of money. It's like, man, is this ever sweet? Right, I'll wiggle it back on. As you can see, they lock on there so you can free your hand up instead of holding it to do whatever you have to do. I'm going to try and put it back on the exact same spot that it was. Hopefully we don't have any leaking issues. I'll know that later. Seems to be on there well. That's what the old pump looked like. I was trying to figure out where was it leaking. I thought maybe it was leaking along the shaft, but it turns out I'll show you here where's the leak hole. There you go. It's kind of dirty in there. You see how this is all wet? Yep, right there's the weep hole. It's been weeping. Antifreeze for who knows how long. So I tried to get a brand name. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. This name has been around for years. But I see where this piece is made. Now, these though, I thought they were always made in the good old SAE, but no, made in China, at least this piece. And I noticed the impeller on the back, not as nice as the factory one, compared to the two here. It looks like there's maybe half the amount of fins. I'm just trying to figure out which way this is going to sit on. There's the weep hole. Usually they make the weep hole go up. And on this pump, it looks like there is only one way to put the pump on. There's a new one. So it looks pretty much the same on the front. So you flip it around. Now it's got like an oily thing on the front of it. There's the impeller. So the little fins are there. This is way different and half of them. Hopefully it's going to work similar. Don't be chintzed out, I guess. No, oh, well, too late now. This wasn't a cheap pump. There were cheaper ones. So I'm just going to pre-fit it, see how it sits there. It's supposed to go that way. And this is where I learned that this must only go on one way. You'll see when I put the gasket on. So I'm going to get a little bit of gasket schmooey. There's the little uh, arrow there pointing to the weep hole. Or to up. Let's just make sure that's all clean. Looks like pretty much is. Clean that little bit of stuff off of my nail. This is some gasket schmooey. And this looks like it's not going to work. Boy, that's old. Uh, well, good thing I have more of it. Yeah. So 
always the way, isn't it? There might be something better you can use now. This is kind of old school. So gasket adhesive. Of course, this one's been open before too. The old vice grips on there. I hope this one's okay. Yeah, it looks like it is. Yeah, it flows. That's good because I had one more container of it that's never been opened. Back to the gasket, see the little nuts there. Look at that. Pro tip for today. This was some kind of container that held mushrooms, I think. I'm going to keep that. It's thin plastic. I'll probably break it easily, but I'll be gentle. And it was free. How was that for recycling? Read the instructions. They want a very thin coat, which is easy to say. So I'm going to try and just put it on here. And then shmooey it, I guess, with my finger. As for the thin coat, boy, I need almost a smaller brush. So I'm just going to smear it around here. Put the gasket on. Like I say, it's, what, five holes? So I thought all the five holes are the same. Not till I started putting it down did I notice a couple holes don't line up. It's like, how can that be? It must just be off just a little bit. So I spun around a little bit more. It's like, well, a couple <laughs> of them work, a couple of them don't again. Spin her a little more. Yeah, spin it just a teeny bit more. I think, oh, looks like that's going to work. Oh, maybe not. One more. Really? Mm. Mm. There you go. Learn everything of something new every day, right? Mm. Try and tap it down a little bit. Get it to sit where it needs to sit. Put some on this side. That should be good. So you know the procedure. Remember the skippable chapters if you're just trying to see how to do it because you have yours apart right now. Try and put a little more on this side here and then do the same thing, shmooey it with my finger. Again, trying to make it very thin. As you can see, I don't know, maybe this stuff's a little older and it's not as thin as it used to be in the container. Like I said, there may be some new kind of well, gasket adhesives you can use. Maybe ask your parts store what they suggest. This is what I had, and it is yee, sticky and stinky. Find out where that arrow is. There it is there, somewhere under the shmooey. <laughs> Man, this stuff's, what a mess. Still trying to find that arrow. There it is. There goes heater again. I was talking to JT from Online Mechanics uh, the other day. It was just around Christmas time and it was minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit. He's like, minus negative? I think they say negative down there. Yes. Whatever that was in Celsius. 38 or 39 or somewhere in there. I think it was minus 38 Celsius, which is minus 34 and a half Fahrenheit. Cold. Had to be some of the coldest days when something like this happens. Oh, and you missed what I'm using there, did you? I've got a little thumb drive, I think is what it's called. It's ratcheting too. So nice for tight spots. Plus you don't have to swing a handle around so I snugged them all up and now I've got my inch pound not a foot pound it's an inch pound torque wrench and I've got to scale it down here because the little socket I'm using is a quarter inch so I'm going to go from three eighths to quarter again I'm just going to snug them up loosely and then once that happened, we'll set it to, supposedly they suggest 89 inch pounds. 
not foot pounds, inch pounds. And a crisscross pattern. Is that how you spell crisscross? I don't know. That I had to look up. I thought it was with a C, but what do I know? So we got them all to the 89 inch pounds, which again isn't much, very much, but they'll all be the same if you use one of these. I highly suggest you get one. There, you can get them fairly cheap. Now, I'm going to put this pulley back on. I want to make sure there's no junk in behind here when I put it on because you don't want it to be wobbling because that'll wreck the pump to wobble. So I'm just going to do some brake clean on here. This one's pretty clean actually. Sometimes junk gets behind here. You might have to chisel it out with something, but this one was pretty good. So, that's probably overkill, but. I think we're done. Put it on. Snug her up. Torque her up. There's a few different ways this can go on. There's no wrong way. Well, I guess there is. <laughs> Put it on backwards. Inside out would be the word. I'm going to try and snug these up again. Oh, I forgot to mention. So on the pump, those bolts were all brand new. This one, these are the old ones. So I've got my little ratcheting wrench. Those are handy to have too. I could use the thumb wrench, I guess. Thumb drive. Try and snug them up again. These are going to be a little tighter than the pump was. And that's the belt routing. Which is on this little... Uh, shield, which I thought was a smart idea on GM's part. Usually you're looking for it. Where is it? Some vehicles don't have it at all. So what I'm going to try and do is get it around all the pulleys and then there's uh, the tensioner and then I'm going to try and do the alternator last, I think is the plan. So it goes in there and it pulls up again. I can get my ratchet in there. There are some tools you can get too. I've actually got the right tool for this, but for some reason I didn't use it. Probably because this one is a lot easier to get at. You gotta pull as far as you can pull. And of course the belt's probably not gonna go on these pulleys properly. At least probably will on the ones that you can see up here. But I'm thinking the crank and your air conditioning pump. I may not sit on there right, so I'm gonna try and take my hands and feel under there and just make sure so I see this one's over a little bit you can see the on the wheel there there's I don't know what you want to call them ridges so it's over a couple a couple are exposed I'm just gonna try and loosen it a little bit and move it over and try and have it on the top and the bottom that belt looks a little wet in the picture here doesn't it Now hopefully it'll dry off. If you hear any squealing or anything from uh, power steering, we'll know what it's from. There, it snapped in. I'm going to feel along the bottom to make sure it's underneath properly too. Now it's time to tighten these. Um, so again, I just snug them up and then they're 180 inch pounds. That's about like 14 or 15 foot pounds, but most foot pound torque wrenches aren't very mm -hmm. accurate at that low. Although I guess I don't know how accurate this is this high. It's almost the end of it. 180 in a crisscross pattern. I've added with some of the me spinning the wheel a little bit. And I've sped it up. I was wondering, what's that sound? That's the heater running at four times or whatever. There you go. I'm going to put this little guard back on with our routing. For the belt. If I recall, I think the 3100 is the same. 
Could be wrong. It's a long time since we did a 3100. I think it's the same engine, just a little bigger bore. Snap this on. Make sure it's not pulling or tugging or anything. And amazing enough, it's just about done. I do have a playlist on this car I've started. There's a bunch of playlists, uh, vehicles I've worked on. A lot of times, a lot of the procedures are very similar. Just bolts will be in a different spot. I'm going to try and put the antifreeze back in here. I'm just looking. That does not look original. Somebody must have changed that cap at one time. Don't really have any history on the car. I've mixed it half and half. I did check what was in there already with a uh, antifreeze tester. So I didn't have to make it a little stronger or anything. So. And another leak has appeared, so I'm not going to be able to go any further than this. The head is actually leaking. I take a bunch of stuff off. It's like, really? You'll have to look up another uh, video to see how to do the procedure for bleeding it. Uh, it's not too hard to do, though. So that's going to do it for the video. Sorry that I didn't uh, get to show you the way you can bleed the system. I'm sure somebody online will show you how to do this. It's not too hard. There's that little bleeder screw. Uh, may help too if you um, can park it with the front end sitting up a little higher so that the air uh, goes to the top, if that makes sense to you. If you like the video, give me the thumbs up, please. Uh, you can subscribe down in the corner as well. Uh, also, check out my buddy's channel here, Brian, right there. Project Time Garage. He's always working on something interesting there. Who knows what it'll be fixing today? Take a look after. Plus, don't want to forget, uh, I have more videos on this car. We'll put right there. Uh, just above it, there'll be a link way up the top as to more videos as we do, you know, fix a few more things in the car. Always going to need something. Until next time, Uncle Mark saying bye-bye for now. Plus, please subscribe. You'll get all the notifications. It's easy. The little dog will show you how. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Testing one, two, three.